Okay, this video is going to discuss option premium and the benefits and consequences of buying close to expiration or farther away from expiration and along those lines. Now we're looking at an option chain for SPY, the ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And we're going to use the 128 strike on SPY for the purpose of this video. So you can see SPY is currently trading right around 128. Okay, so let's take the call side first. Now, Note that the options we're looking at expire tomorrow, January 6th. These are weekly options. Now the 128 call strike is currently going for 48 cents, 48 by 49. And SPY is right around 128. So what that means is you're paying 48 cents in premium, premium is the price you pay to own the contract at that strike price, the strike price being 128. You're paying 48 cents in premium to own SPY at 128 tomorrow at expiration. So essentially what you're doing is you're paying 128.50 the strike price plus the premium that you're paying for it to own SPY at expiration tomorrow today. Okay? So how is this going to make money? Well, you need SPY to rise ideally as soon as possible because expiration is tomorrow. So if SPY is at 128 right now and people are willing to pay 50 cents for the right to own it at 128 today, but then SPY opens up tomorrow at the same price as it is today, you're going to see a lot of premium come out of that option because who wants to pay 50 cents for the right to own it at 128 tomorrow if it's still just sitting at 128? People aren't going to want to pay more than 5 or 10 cents. Now, what we want to show here is that right now today you can pay 50 cents in premium which is factoring in about a 0.4 percent rise in SPY from where it's at right now but expiration is tomorrow so you need SPY to get above 128.50 as soon as possible and that's just to break even in order to really make money you need to see SPY get up to 129 or so but why is this favorable well for SPY to go from 128 to 129 would be a 0.7 percent move so if that happened these would go from 50 cents to a dollar so the premiums would rise 100 percent you would profit 100 percent just from the premiums alone you would profit 100 percent just from the premiums alone on a 0.7 percent move in SPY think about that that's very incredible the fact that SPY can move 0.7 percent and you could manage to make 100% on the option. But remember, expiration is tomorrow, so you need the move to happen tomorrow. Now, what we're going to point out when we look at next week's contracts on the same 128 strike call, they're going for a dollar and 30 cents. Why? Because there's more time between now and expiration. More time equals more uncertainty in the marketplace as far as where is SPY going to be. It's much easier to predict where SPY will be tomorrow than it is to predict where it will be next week.
Friday. So because of that, the market is going to demand that you pay more in premium. Think of it like a loan from a friend. If they let you borrow $10 from them and you say you'll pay them back tomorrow, that's all well and good. You know, you pay them back $10 the next day and it's fine. No questions asked. But what if a week goes by and you still haven't paid them back? Or what if you don't know if you'll be able to pay them back the next day? They're going to want a little bit more insurance. So this is the equivalent of more insurance. You get another week out, you get another week until expiration, the market is going to demand more insurance because of the uncertainty. So unlike here where you're only factoring in a 50 cent increase from the current price or 0.4%, next week's 128 calls are factoring in an increase of a dollar and 30 cents roughly or a 1% rise in SPY. Because remember, 130, the price we're paying in premium plus the strike price of 128 puts our break even at 129.30. So you need SPY by next week's expiration to be at 129.30, and that's just to break even. So the takeaway is that you pay less in premium the closer you are to expiration, but there is less time for the move you need to happen to occur. So while you'll pay less in premium than you will on next week's call, the rewards can be greater because you're paying less in premium. So if SPY does make that move that we discussed earlier up to 129, you can make 100% on this. Whereas if SPY gets up to 129 today on these, yeah, the return will be good, but it won't be 100% because there's already premium baked into it. The 128s for next week are trading at a premium of 150% more than the 128 premiums expiring tomorrow excuse me, the 128 call contracts expiring tomorrow. Now, we discussed how this will make money, and it's quite simple because expiration is tomorrow, so we know what we're going to get. Now, if SPY goes down to 127.50, who's going to want to pay for these 128 calls? Nobody. Why would you want to own those? So these will go to zero. So, you know, you're paying less in premium, but they could go to zero very quickly overnight. Whereas these ones, since there's still a whole week until expiration, if SPY does drop to 127.50, these are definitely going to drop, but they're not going to go to zero because there's still five days. There's still the possibility of SPY coming back up before expiration. Now, how will these ones make the most money? If the greatest move to the upside happens, farthest away from expiration because what that'll do what I mean by that first is if you own these calls right now at 130 you want to see SPY hit 130 by Monday or Tuesday of next week because that would be three days before expiration and SPY will be uptrending so that will allow for the uncertainty to work in your favor because now Instead of the uncertainty working against you, the uncertainty will be on the side of, oh, SPY is uptrending, it looks good, so we're willing to pay even more in premium for the right to own it at 128 because it's at 130. Now, again, these can go against you, though, if next week SPY hasn't moved from 128 because the premium is going to start to come out. just like the premium has came out of these ones. You think these were at 53 cents to start the week? No. If you look, SPY started the week at 128. 
I guarantee you these were probably trading for a buck fifty or so because of the fact there was five days to go before expiration. So you're getting the same thing right here for next week. There's a lot of time before expiration in the options world anyway. So you're going to have to pay more premium. Furthermore, to, sh to hammer the example in even more, let's go out to January 22nd, which is, what, two and a half, three weeks from now. First, I'll guess. The 128 calls are probably going for three bucks or so. We'll see if I'm anywhere close. Nowhere close. This is even less premium than I thought it would be. But it's always fun to guess. So still, though, you can see the January 128s are going for $1.84. So again, more premium than the January, January 13 128s. Why? Because there's more time. More time, more uncertainty. The market will want you to pay more in premium if, if there's more uncertainty. You see the same thing on the put side with these 128s. The 128s expiring tomorrow are going for about 46 cents. So just like on the call side, how you add the premium that you're paying to the strike price to figure out your break even, because a call is a bullish bet, that the underlying asset, in this case SPY, will rise. What do you think you do on the put side? Well, a put is a bearish bet, so it's essentially like a short. So instead of finding out your break even from the long side, you find out your break even from the short side by this time subtracting the premium you pay from the strike price. So you would do 128 minus 46 cents, which is 127.54. So that means your break even on SPY is 127.54. SPY is currently at 128.10. So you essentially need a drop in SPY of 60 cents just to break even. And this needs to happen by tomorrow, because remember, expiration is tomorrow. So on the short side, these puts are factoring in a premium of 0.4%. Now, if SPY, though, were to drop down to 127 tomorrow, these puts would rise 100%, just like we showed with the example on the call side. So again, SPY just needs to drop 0.8% in order for these options to move 100%, which is a tremendous return. But again, we can't stress this enough. These will be at zero tomorrow if SPY is up to 128.50 or so, because who is going to want to pay for the right to be short at 128 at tomorrow's expiration when it's clearly not going to be below 128. It's like going to check out a car today that runs perfectly and you're willing to pay $10,000 for it and you make a handshake deal, but then tomorrow you go to pick up the car and you notice it's not working so well anymore. You're not going to pay $10,000 for it you're going to negotiate a lower price. Heck, you might not even want the car anymore, depending on how bad the damage is. It's the same way in SPY. Right now, there's still a chance that it'll be below 128 tomorrow, so people are willing to pay a little bit in premium. But tomorrow, if it doesn't look like it's going to significantly get below, you know, 128.50 or, uh, excuse me, 127.50, why on earth will anybody want the right to be short these puts? Now, just like we showed the difference in premium on the call side, we'll show it on the put side as well. You can see the 128s are going for a buck 20. So that's factoring in a drop down to 126.80 on SPY. So 
from the current price of 128.10, now you need a drop of 0.9% just for these to break even versus the drop that you needed on these ones to break even of 0.4%. So with that logic, you're paying over 100% more in premium. Again, because there's more time, you will pay more in premium to own these puts, right? These ones are factoring in a drop of 0.4%, so therefore, we're paying 0.4% in premium. These ones are factoring in a drop of 0.9%, so that's what we're paying in premium. 0.9% is obviously double 0.4%, so that's why we say you're paying over 100% more in premium if you go out to next week. Now, again, if you look further out towards January 21st, you'll be paying even more in premium for the 128 puts. Yeah, you see, you'll be paying 169. So that's, a, that's 40 cents more. So now you need an even bigger drop, you know, now we're talking about a drop from the current prices of 1.3%. So you can see the farther and farther you go out, the more and more you'll pay in premium. Now, just like we explained on the call side, how are these puts going to make money next week? Well, they need SPY to get below 128 as soon as possible. And if SPY at this time next week is still around 128, the premium here isn't going to be going for $1.15 because there will only be one day for expiration. It'll probably be going for a lot closer to what these ones expiring tomorrow are going for now, $0.42. Cents. So with that said, you know, we really want to emphasize the importance of understanding what you're trading relative to the move you need to happen to be able to make money. You know, SPY could drop tomorrow a little bit, but remember, if it doesn't drop significantly, these puts are not going to make money. You need to be able to factor your break even, and you do that by adding the calls to the strike price and subtracting the puts from the strike price. If you look here at the 127 puts going for 15 cents, you might say, oh, 15 cents, that's really cheap. Well, the reason they're really cheap is because the break-even is 126.85, 127 minus 15 cents. SPY is at 128.17 right now. So just to break even on these ones, you need a drop overnight of 1% in SPY. So, you know, the risk-reward, yeah, it might look cheap, but you need a big drop to happen really soon. And that's just to break even. Now, these would perform great. If SPY drops to 126 tomorrow, these are gonna go up to a buck and you know return 600%. But is that really what's most likely to happen is what you have to ask yourself. It's the same thing with the 129 calls going for 18 cents. Yeah, they might look cheap, but that's factoring in an increase of, you know, 0.8% or so. After SPY's already rallied a good chunk this week. So that's why they're cheap. Now again, if SPY goes to 130 tomorrow, these are going to return 400%. But is that really what's most likely to happen? So it's really important to understand what your break-even level is and the moves you need to happen. And also understand the further you go out, the more you're going to be paying in premium, which there's pros and cons to. The pros are you're giving yourself more time for the move you need to happen to actually happen. But the con is that you've paid so much in premium now that if the move doesn't happen, the premium is going to erode the closer and closer it gets to expiration like we're seeing today with these puts. Look, these 128 puts are down 33 cents today. So, you know, 
we're talking about a decrease in these puts of 40%. SPY's flat and these puts are down 40%. So it's, it's just something to think about. Hopefully everybody now will find this video helpful and useful. We invite those of you watching on YouTube to come sign up at stockhaven.com and join us in our big board chat room and options chat room where we trade options, big boards, ETFs, anything that's trading, you know, we're, we're making money off of it. Again, the address is stockhaven.com.